Hey guys, welcome back to Pico Cosmos. Today I'll be doing an unboxing and review of the Daphnia hatching kit from Aquatic Live Food. For anybody who's not familiar with Daphnia, they're a small aquatic crustacean that are widely used in the aquarium hobby as a live food source for fish. But I think they're quite beautiful animals in their own right, so today we're going to be raising them as pets instead. Daphnia are also known as water fleas because of the unusual way that they propel themselves through the water in a leap type of motion rather than a smooth continuous movement like you typically see with most other aquatic animals. This will be my first time trying to raise them from eggs, so I'm super excited for today's video. This kit was released in 2022 by the Australian based company Aquatic Live Food. It usually costs $38.50, but I managed to pick it up for a slightly discounted price during an Easter sale. And as far as I'm aware, this is the world's only Daphnia culturing kit that's designed for you to hatch and raise them from eggs. And just like sea monkeys, Daphnia cysts can enter cryptobiosis, where they remain in a dormant state when desiccated and will only hatch once they're rehydrated in water. And really, you can kind of think of this kit as being like a freshwater version of sea monkeys, though obviously with a different species. And I should also mention that this kit is explicitly designed for children. So I'm not really the target demographic here, but I have a huge passion for small animals, so I figured this would be fun to try out. The packaging is pretty straightforward. The white box that comes in is a little beat up, but the contents is fine, so it's not really an issue. On the front it says, Daphnia Egg Kit, Grow Your Own Daphnia with a cool little stylized illustration of a blue Daphnia in the middle, which I personally really like. The back of the box has a sticker on it with a QR code that's supposed to lead to a download link for the PDF of an instruction manual. For whatever reason, it doesn't work, but luckily when I purchased this kit from their website, it came with a download link to the PDF. On the cover they call it a kids hatching kit. It has some great general information about Daphnia, an FAQ section, and of course instructions about how to set everything up. That's pretty much it for the outside of the box, so let's open this up and see what's inside. Despite being a small box, its contents is elaborate. I'm quite impressed that they've managed to fit so much in here. First up we have a small thermometer which sticks onto the tank. Daphnia prefer cooler temperatures of around 15 to 20 degrees Celsius or 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, so this should be pretty helpful for keeping an eye on things. I'm a little surprised to see that they've also included a small heat pad and power brick. I guess this would be useful if you live somewhere where it gets really cold, but I think for most people it's probably not necessary to use. It's great that they've included it though, as it helps to promote proper care for your pets, and it should be useful in winter. Next up we have a small 3mm pipette, which is a really handy tool for picking up Daphnia and moving them around, and also for aerating the tank if you're not using an air pump. Speaking of an air pump, there's a piece of airline, an air control valve, and an air check valve in here too. These accessories are for anybody who already has an electronic air pump at home that they're planning on using with this kit to oxygenate their tank. I'll definitely be using these three for my setup today. They've also included a fine mesh net which is used for harvesting the Daphnia. I assume this is if you want to move them into a larger tank, or perhaps if you wanted to collect them to feed to your fish. Now on to the more interesting stuff. There are two small plastic vials in here. The first has crushed up Indian almond leaves, also known as katapa leaves. They're well known in the aquarium hobby for adding important trace elements of minerals into the water, as well as for their antimicrobial and antibacterial properties. Katapa leaves slowly break down in the tank over time, releasing tannins which turn the water slightly brown. This promotes the growth of infusoria, which are tiny single-celled microorganisms which help to transform the tank into an ecosystem of multiple species. So in essence, they help to replicate the environment of Daphnia found in nature. Best of all, it's 100% natural too. The second vial has a water conditioner which is a dark brown colour. I got in touch with Aquatic Live Food to ask them what this is, and they told me that the conditioner contains more of those antibacterial tannins I just mentioned. Apparently there's enough conditioner in here for two Daphnia cultures, so I'll only be using half for today's setup. Next up we have the Daphnia eggs. Even though these are really tiny, I can tell that there's a lot in here, at least a few hundred. The instructions say to pour all of them into your tank, but I think I'll only use half because I don't want things getting too crowded. Here they are under my microscope at 60 times zoom. You can see that the eggs appear white and come in pairs, though I'll tell you a little more about why when I explain their reproductive cycle later in this video. Aquatic Life Food told me they weren't sure which Daphnia species these are, 
So I'll try to determine that with my microscope once they reach adulthood. And lastly we have the tank. It's a small plastic container which looks to be around 300 mils in volume. It has a black screw on lid with a small hole that's been drilled into the middle. This is to allow you to feed an airline into the tank for aeration. It looks to be quite a snug fit for the rubber airline though, so I'm not exactly sure how air is supposed to get out. I've decided to make a small modification by drilling another small hole into the lid to allow the air to circulate a little better. Now, you might have noticed that this setup hasn't come with any kind of physical instructions, and that's because you're just supposed to use the digital ones instead, so that's the guide I'll be following for today's setup. The first step is to fill the tank with 3 quarters of bottled spring water. I've heard that the minerals found in spring water make it preferable to distilled water for Daphnia, so that's what I'll be using today. Next up we need to pour in the water conditioner. The instructions say to just add in half. The tannins in here make the water a little brown, which isn't all that nice to look at, but they'll create a great environment for the Daphnia to thrive. This liquid has quite a strong smell to it too. Now it's time to add in the crushed up Indian almond leaves. Since these are dried out, they'll float at the surface of the tank, but over the next few days, they'll begin to absorb water and eventually sink to the bottom where they'll form a sort of substrate. It's finally time now to add in the dried Daphnia eggs. This vial is really tiny, so I'm being careful not to accidentally add in too many. It usually takes 12 to 48 hours for these to hydrate and hatch, so for now we just have to wait. I'm going to keep my tank on this windowsill for the next few weeks because it's a nice bright area, but it doesn't receive any direct sunlight, so this should help to keep my Daphnia at a nice cool stable temperature. I'm also going to use this air pump to aerate the tank's water. Thankfully this kit came with an air control valve that will allow me to keep the air pressure nice and low. You'll notice I'm not using an air stone at the end of my airline, and that's because I've heard that the small bubbles produced by an air stone can actually get stuck under the soft shell carapace of the Daphnia, which can cause them to float and get stuck at the water surface, so the large bubbles from a regular airline are the best option. We're approaching winter here in New Zealand, and while it's starting to get a little chilly at night, I don't think it's necessary for me to use the heat pad which came with this kit quite yet, especially since Daphnia have a preference for cooler temperatures. And that's all for now guys, I'll check back in with you soon once I've seen the first hatchlings swimming around. Hey guys, it's been a full 3 days since I first set this tank up, and I'm really happy to say that we now have some baby Daphnia swimming around in the tank. I've heard that Daphnia eggs can hatch in as little as 12 hours, so I started getting a little worried when I still hadn't seen any movement in here after the first couple of days, so this is a bit of a relief. The slow hatching time may have been because it's been quite cold here these last few days. I'm not really sure, but at least we have babies now. I'll put some under the microscope so we can get a better look at them up close. They're absolutely tiny at this stage, no more than a millimetre long, so they're still much too small to determine the species, but we can see their anatomy beginning to take shape. The body of Daphnia have a large shell-like carapace that encases their small legs, which are called philopods. The philopods beat back and forth, creating a current of water, which flows from their head towards their tails, allowing them to collect and eat algae. I'm sure you've probably already noticed the large antenna protruding from their heads too. One pair has a sensorial function, while the other is used for swimming. Something incredible about this footage is that we can actually already see their little heart beating. Apparently the speed increases or slows down depending on the temperature. Alright, I'll put this guy back into the tank and we'll take another look at them in a few days when they're a bit larger. I want to feed them today too. Now, this kit doesn't come with any kind of food, but the PDF instruction sheet that came with this kit recommends feeding them live algae, though I don't have any freshwater algae species at the moment, but I do have some dried spirulina powder which should work. I'll mix a little with water and pour it into their tank. I'm only using a really small amount here, as overfeeding is an easy way to crash your entire Daphnia colony. I'll give you guys another update in a week or so from now to see how the Daphnia are doing. Hey guys, we're up to the 10 day mark now, and I'm happy to say that we officially have adult Daphnia. They've grown to their maximum size of around half a centimetre, or 0.2 of an inch long, and there's a bunch of smaller babies in there now too. I've been feeding them a very small amount of spirulina powder every few days, which seems to have worked well. It's really easy to accidentally crash Daphnia cultures due to poor water quality though, so it's important to do small water changes every so often just to keep things clean. Today I'm going to remove and discard around 20% of the tank water using a turkey baster, and then replace it with fresh bottled spring water. 
This makes sure that their water parameters don't change too suddenly while also keeping things nice and clean. Under good conditions, it only takes around 8 days or so for Daphnia to reach adulthood, which is why these guys have already started reproducing. I've noticed a small amount of green algae starting to grow at the bottom of their tank as well, and since live microalgae is Daphnia's favourite food source, it started turning their gut a bright green colour. Now that they're adults, we can try to determine which species of Daphnia this is under the microscope too. There are over 100 species in the genus Daphnia, which does kind of make this hard, but there are only two species which are used almost exclusively in the aquarium hobby, Daphnia pollux and Daphnia magna, so I'm betting on these guys being one of those two. The main distinguishing feature between pollux and magna is their size, with magna being the larger of the two species. They have some minor anatomical differences as well, the most obvious being the shape of their post-abdomen and post-abdominal claw. Judging by the size and shape of these guys, I'd say they're most likely Daphnia pollux. That's because they're not particularly large, and the comb-like thorns on the distal part of their abdomen is in one continuous structure, unlike in Daphnia magna, which has two distinct combs with a gap between them. I think what I find most incredible about Daphnia is the way they reproduce. Almost all Daphnia are born female, and when conditions are good, they're actually born pregnant too. Their offspring are almost exclusively parthenogenic, meaning the mothers create genetically identical clones of themselves. When conditions aren't so favourable though, for example if food is scarce or population densities rise too high, then some of the eggs in the pregnant mother will develop into males. Though interestingly, these males are also genetically identical to their mothers, meaning that in Daphnia, sex is an environmentally determined trait. These males can then mate with females sexually, allowing true gene exchange to occur. After sexual reproduction, female Daphnia will begin to develop a saddle-like structure called an ophipium, which holds two eggs known as resting eggs. When she sheds her exoskeleton, she'll also release these resting eggs, which can then remain in dormancy for many decades, and then incredibly still hatch once they're in favourable conditions, just like we did at the beginning of this video. These hatched eggs will both be females, who will then carry on producing through parthenogenic means, meaning that right now, in all likelihood, all of my Daphnia are probably females. Something else I love about freshwater crustaceans like Daphnia is that you can easily put aquarium plants and tank mates in with them too. I have a sea monkey tank here with floating duckweed, a plant which proliferates incredibly fast and has developed long roots which reach down into the tank. I've also put a small ram's horn snail in here, which seems to enjoy making its way around the tank like a small vacuum cleaner. Let me know if you guys are interested in seeing a video with a more elaborate Daphnia tank setup in the future. This Daphnia hatching kit from Aquatic Life Food has been really fun to use for the last couple of weeks. For a first generation product, and something that's the first of its kind on the market, I think they've done a really great job. Daphnia are a low effort species and easy to raise pet. Their tolerance to a wide temperature range makes them ideal for anybody who lives in a cold to temperate climate, or those who are on a bit of a budget and don't want to use a permanent heating option. I love that they've included tannins and Indian almond leaves with this kit too. They're great tools for teaching people how to properly care for their pets, and it makes their environment look more interesting. All of the extra accessories in this kit, such as the fine mesh net, heat pad and airline tubing, while not essential, are a welcome addition. The tank they've chosen obviously has a lot of room for improvement. It's just a mass-produced plastic container, which gets the job done, but it would be really nice to see something similar to the Ocean Zoo tank used in Sea Monkey sets. One glaring omission from this kit is the lack of any kind of food to feed them. My best guess is that this is intentional, as Aquatic Life Food would like you to purchase a live algae culture from their website to feed your Daphnia. And while this is definitely the ideal feeding option, I think it would be better if some dried algae powder such as spirulina or astaxanthin was included instead. Fortunately these aren't too difficult to find, but it is an additional expense. Overall I had a lot of fun with this kit, and it was really cool to hatch my own Daphnia from eggs. They might not be the most elegant animals, but they sure are beautiful. I'm excited to see what kind of plants and tank mates I can keep with my Daphnia in the future too. I think an amphipod like scuds and ostracods, also known as seed shrimp, would be great options that I'm planning to experiment with. I want to hear from you guys though. Would you be interested in getting this kit and trying out Daphnia for yourself? Let me know down in those comments below, and I'll catch you in the next video.